In this video, we are cruising through even more Pico CTF 2022. Not four, two. <laughs> and in the last video, we just did a basic buffer overflow, just making a program crash, just by spamming it with a whole lot of info, learning about some of the dangerous functions C, like gets or str copy, etc. Uh, hey, go check out that other video if you haven't seen it before, but let's dive into what we're up to today. So I'm gonna be diving into this cred stuff challenge. It's the next challenge that we have in the cryptography category. And let's take a look at what we're up against. It says, hey, we found a leak of black market websites login credentials. Can you find the password of this user, culturist maybe, and successfully decrypt it? Download the link here. It says the first user in usernames.txt corresponds to the first password in passwords.txt. The second user corresponds to the second password and so on. Okay, so let's grab this download and let's hop on over to our terminal. Uh, I have categories created for us in different folders so far, binary exploitation and cryptography. So let's move into the cryptography category and create a new directory for us to work in called cred stuff. And let's use wget to download this file. This is a tar file. With that said, we can use something like tar or untar. Is untar a command? No, I'm dumb. <laughs> we can use tar to extract it. And if you don't know the arguments to the tar command line, it's super easy to remember as much as everyone makes it a joke and a meme. Uh, look, all you need to do is X to extract a file. If you want to use V for verbose, that way you can see, hey, what all is being extracted, like the file names, etc. And you can use F to specify the file. Honestly, all you really need is XF in all reality. Uh, let's use that VF to keep it verbose because we like explicit info. Uh, and we'll pass in leak.tar. There we go. Okay, it created a new directory called leak. And inside of these, we have two files, usernames and passwords.txt. Let's go ahead and open up both of them in sublime text. I'll pass both of these as arguments and it'll open up for us just like this. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this over to the other side so we can make sense of this. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is just look for that name that we're trying to determine what this thing is called Tyrus. <laughs> totally wrong on that name. Uh, but I'm just going to use control F. That's it. I'm just going to search for that name. Hit enter and we found it. Okay. That's on line 378, which realistically means, okay, if, if it matches in lines with this passwords.txt file, we should find their password on 378. I'll scroll down to that number. And we should see this string, right? Hmm. But there's something odd here. This doesn't look like a flag. It, it looks like it, the beginnings of a flag. You can see the curly braces here uh, at the end and the underscore to note something's wonky here. But it uh, it's not Pico CTF. It's CVPB PGS. Um, for a whole lot of veterans, right, for folks that are in this capture the flag world already, this might stick out to you like a sore thumb. And realistically, it does to me because, hey, uh, noting the capitalization and curly braces, and we are looking at the flag right here, but it is encoded. I don't even know if encryption is the right thing to say here. Uh, but when we've been playing with our modular arithmetic in the previous cryptography challenges, this is an example of maybe modular arithmetic based off of the letters in the alphabet and how they could be shifted in one way. Uh, mod 13, half of the alphabet. Let me show you what that is. Uh, if folks aren't familiar, this is what they call a Caesar cipher. It's actually rot 13 if you were trying to rotate or a substitution cipher. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting my explanations all mixed up. <laughs> but this is a Caesar cipher after all. It is one of the simplest and most widely known encryption techniques. I'm going to put encryption in air quotes, not going to lie. It's a type of substitution cipher in which each letter in plain text is replaced by a letter some fixed number of positions down the alphabet. For example, with a left shift of three, D would be replaced by A, and E would be become B, and so on. The method is named after Julius Caesar, who allegedly hey, would pass notes and send messages back home or whatever with this technique. Kind of cheesy, kind of silly, but again, known for ROT13 for this gimmick. Now, we could just do this mapping pretty easily. We could write this in Python, as a lot of you, hey, now we've got some skills in doing that. Uh, there are a, lot, a whole lot of tools that could do this for us. We could honestly just Google, hey, uh, what is it, ROT13 decoder? And here's a ROT13.com. I'm just going to paste this in, <laughs> and 
there we go. Uh, there's our flag. <laughs> That's all it took. And encrypting and decrypting is kind of the same way in both directions, right? Because 13 is half of the alphabet. If I shift this from other rotation in a different quote unquote key here, you'll see, okay, it's just changing the position of the alphabet. Uh, ROT 13 though is always going to be encrypted and decrypted in one way or the other with ROT 13. What I mean by that is, sure, let's take this Pico CTF and paste it right down below. You could very, very well see uh, it gives you the original encrypted value, right? Okay, uh, sure, we could use an online tool. That's something cheesy. We, that's something dumb. But you could do this in the command line just as well. Let me grab the original uh, quote-unquote encrypted one. If we were to echo this, we could replace values and characters with like the TR command. That's for transform or replace. You could actually supply a set here. Uh, I think it's, I gotta, I gotta double check, A to Z. No, A to M, right? Because we're going through half the alphabet. A to M uh, and lowercase A to M just as well could go to N to Z. Am I getting that right? People are gonna be screaming and yelling at me. I know it's gonna be in the comments. John, you're an idiot. Yeah, I totally got that wrong. <laughs> All right, so let's look up uh, rot13 bash tr command. There it is. There it is. There it is. Ah, uh, okay. So you use some other magic at the very, very end to see how these are might be replaced. You get it into standard output with your echo command and you pipe it into the standard input of another command, TR to transform. Uh, if you want to check out the man pages for that, you could very easily do that. Man TR, translate or delete characters with tag D. Anyway, uh, the syntax here uses a little bit more quick magic to be able to shift things around nice and easy. Uh, and they actually made an alias for this and that could do it super duper quick and easy if you wanted to just as well. Let's take that syntax. I'll paste it in right here. And there is our ROT13 cipher decoded or decrypted. Uh, if, if folks really wanted to though, there is a uh, ROT13 utility. Uh, is it in HX tools? Uh, Kali is recommending me this. Whoa, but I don't know if we nearly need all those dependencies. I normally retrieve this from the BSD games. Uh, BSD games. Oh, maybe it is all that stuff. <laughs> okay, whatever. Let's hit install. Um, I'm using apt as my package manager in Ubuntu or Debian-based system like Kali Linux, right? Uh, and we then have a command, rot13, where I could simply echo that string that I had previously pipe it into ROT13, and I don't need to remember or memorize that whole TR syntax. Or you could set the alias, just like the Stack Overflow one is having you do. Uh, with this, though, you also have a new utility like Caesar. Caesar will allow you to hey, pass in a, a number for how many places you'd like to shift it. So Caesar will allow you to say, hey, Caesar13, sure, that's the same thing as ROT13 as a cipher. But if you want to do shifted by 12 spaces, or 11, or 10, or one, right? Obviously zero is going to give you the exact same thing because you aren't shifting it at all, but that's the gimmick. That's the trick. And you could do that with those quick and easy command line tools rather than going out on the internet to Google for, hey, some tool do it for you. Uh, that's that. That's all it is. Let's grab our flag and let's go ahead and submit this. Uh, I, what is this? Am I getting the numbers wrong? No, it says saves time. Oh, it's control F. <laughs> I was trying to read that first word in elite speaking. Like, what are you talking about? Anyway, let's go ahead and submit this one. And we are cruising in the world, moving up on the scoreboard. Here we go. Another 100 points. And that challenge is done. Well, hey, thank you so, so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Kind of simple, kind of easy. Again, we're moving through the training wheels, baby stuff, and Pico CTF, but we're having fun. And I hope you're learning some new tricks all along the way. If you did like this video, please do all those YouTube algorithm things. I'd love if you could like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, all those things that help the channel grow, support, share, you know the drill. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Take care.